Hey guys, so today I'm gonna to be doing a video that I'm super duper excited about. I was looking back and thinking back on how differently I do my makeup now versus how I used to. I used to fully set my face with a very, very heavy amount of setting powder, set my eyelids first before doing my eyeshadow. I used to do my brows with dip brow and I used to feather them into the front. I used to do things so differently than I do now. Now I don't set my foundation or my concealer. I don't set my eyelid primer before I do my eyeshadow. I do my brows with like a little pin versus doing it with a brush and dip brow. I do things so differently and I wanted to compare the two to see which one looks better, what I do now or what I did then. So today we are going to do a half face and you guys can be the judge and decide what looks better. I want to preface this video with saying, however you decide to do your makeup, great by me. I literally couldn't care less what anyone else decides to do with their makeup. I find for myself personally that the longer I go, the more either natural I want to look or sometimes I wanna look so glam. I think that makeup is subjective to how you're feeling each day and no matter what you decide to do or which side you prefer, that's personal preference and I couldn't care less what anyone decides to do with their own face. The beauty of makeup is that it washes off and you can play around with it and decide what you're feeling that particular day. Lately, I like to just use really glowy products, no setting my face, really dewy and highlighted, and a little more natural in certain areas. Another big difference is that now I use a brush for my foundation versus I only used to use the Real Techniques Miracle Complexion Sponge. It has been a hot minute since I have baked my face and I used to bake the shit out of my face. Let's just jump into the video, but before we do, make sure you guys subscribe to my YouTube channel. I upload new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. You guys can also follow me on all my social media stuff, but the two that I update most often are Twitter and Instagram. Both of those are Rob Beauty Christy, and let's just jump into it. I have almost always done my eyes first. I did used to do my foundation and everything first, but I think for this video, it's gonna be great to just do my eyes first so you can see each step along the way. So for the right side of my face, I think that's gonna be what I used to do with makeup and the left side's gonna be what I do now. I'm gonna start off with the what I used to do side. To prime my eyelids before, I used to use Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. This is something I haven't even pulled out for almost a year or two now. I used to love this so much much, but I just find it too drying on my eyes and it used to be exclusively the only thing I would use. So I'm gonna prime with Tarte Shape Tape. This is the shade Fair Neutral. Oh, this is bringing back memories. I feel like this concealer for me is generally best as an eyelid primer instead of under eye. This one just to me, I feel like is so drying. What I use now is the ColourPop No Filter Concealer. This is the shade Fair 02 and I just love this. I feel like it's such a good eyelid primer. And a big difference that I used to do versus now is I used to set my eyelid primer with powder and I wanted to make sure that the powders that I would put on top of it would blend out really easily. There would be no harsh edges, but what I discovered, and this is from watching Rocio, is that she mentioned that she does not set her eyelid primer, and she doesn't because the shadows generally turn out a lot more vivid than when you set it. So you can see they both look very similar. Then what I used to do is I would take the cap off of my RCMA No Color Powder, and I would tip my beauty blender in there, tip it on top to get tons of powder on there, like this, and I would set my eyelids. I would literally bake my freaking eyelid. Oh my gosh, this just brings back so many memories. And for this side, I just make sure to really tap it out and leave it tacky. I give it a couple of minutes to set down a bit so it's not completely wet, but I never set it at all with any sort of powder. And this side, I would brush off the excess and then this would be ready for eyeshadow application. So I think for today's eyeshadow application, I'm gonna be using the ABH Soft Glam Palette. This is just such a good eyeshadow palette for a neutral look, and I'm gonna just go in and see if the sides have a different application, different pigmentation, everything like that. So I'm gonna zoom you in. I'm gonna go in on the powdered side first, is this one here, yeah. And my theory always was that because you powder it first, it's gonna give you the best blendability, but then the other side's gonna get more pigmented, so we're gonna see. First, I'm gonna dip into Burnt Orange here, and I'm gonna be using my Makeup Addiction Soft Crease Brush. Okay. 
So that's what it looks like there when you do set the eyeshadow primer. And now let's see what that same color looks like on this side without setting the eyelid primer. I feel like initially when I look at these in my little mirror here, I do feel very much that this side is more pigmented than this side over here. This side looks nice and blended, but it's definitely less intense than this side here. So then I'm gonna dip into Sienna here and I'm just going to blend it a little bit down into the crease. and do the same thing on the other side. So I do still feel that this side is a little bit deeper and more pigmented. Although I feel like the more we're going because there is a layer of powder down now, the more similar that they are applying. I've always done my eyeshadow very similarly. There's not gonna be that big of a difference as far as eyeshadow application goes. The majority of the difference in what my makeup is gonna look like is gonna be on the face application because it is like 180 difference on what I used to do. So I'm gonna go in with the shade Rustic now, which is right here, and I'm going to take that on my little Luxie 237 brush. I'm gonna kind of do a halo. This was something that I really used to do. I still do a halo eye, let's not lie, but. And I don't notice much of a difference in the blendability either. Like I know a lot of people say that when you set your eyeshadow, it blends a lot easier. And I don't really feel much of a difference. I don't know if it's translating on camera or not, but this side is definitely a little more lackluster than this side here. I just feel like it's, when I see them in person especially, this one here looks just really a lot more minimal than this one, but in, on camera, I don't know if it translates as well. And then I used to take my Tarte Shape Tape Concealer, I would put it on the back of my hand here, and then this was my favorite crease cutting brush back in the day. This is the Smith Cosmetics 302 brush. This is actually a lip brush, and this is the shape here, but I used to love this for crease cutting, and while I do still think it does a good job, I feel like my Bodyography Pro Flat Shader brush that I use now is just a little bit better. So I'm gonna use it on this side. I feel like it works fine, but the issue I have with it is that you can't use the brush shape to your advantage as well. When you use the other brush that I have, it's got that flat top so you can just really stamp it on. kind of what I would used to do. And now I would take my ColourPop No Filter Concealer. I'll use my little Bodyography Pro Flat Shader Brush, which looks like this. It's a lot different of a shape. Really load it up with concealer and sort of stamp it on. At this point, a lot of times what I would do is I would like tap a shimmer onto the center of my lid. So I'm gonna go in with the bronze shade from this palette. I'm going to tap it on. And I'm gonna take my Bodyography Pro brush for this side and just really bring it up close to that edge. And then for this side, I would tap some of these shades over the edge just to really blend them in together. Mm -hmm. 
And before I would probably leave it like this. I would leave it very similar like this, but sometimes I would just kind of tap the edges out. But I think before what I used to do is take less time on my eyeshadows because I didn't think it was that big of a deal because again, lashes can fix everything. So I would just sort of leave it like this with the edges the way that they were. And now I make sure to sort of blend the edges in together so it's a little more cohesive. The eye looks look very similar, but I just feel like this one looks a little more finished. I used to feel like with lashes, the spikier the better. Like if it were super separated and spiky, it was ideal for me. And I feel like the more I've gone on, the more I realize that spiky lashes can just look sometimes a little bit I mean, lashes look fake in general, let's not kid ourselves, but I used to like, I want that shit sp the spikiest it could possibly be. And now I like them a little more fluffy. So this side that I used to do, I'm gonna do a spiky lash. And then this side, I am going to do a bit more of a fluffy lash. And I'll be right back to show you guys the difference. Okay, so here are the lashes applied. I like this side much better now. It's just fluffier, it's less dramatic than this. I used to really love the drama. In fact, I probably would have done a lot more black on this side. I might even do that now because I would want to add a lot more depth to this eye. But honestly, I would do something like this on the daily. That's a bit more like it. But one thing I noticed is, and, and I, I still don't hate these lashes. They're just not what I would gravitate towards now because what happened is I would see pictures of myself from like far away and all you could see was just lines going up my eye. And I just realized that these probably weren't the most flattering on me. Whereas before, like this is all I wanted in my life. Now I like a lot more of a fluttery, soft lash and that's the difference right there. To this day, I still use my Makeup Geek Obsidian eyeliner because I like a really deep waterline and I still do it the same way that I used to. All right, now we're gonna move on to the rest of the face and I'm gonna finish off the eyes at the end. And this is where the huge difference comes in. I've always loved L'Oreal Pro Glow Foundation. It's been one of my favorites for years and I'm gonna apply it, but I'm gonna apply it the way that I used to on the right side of my face. So I used to put it on the back of my hand and I would go in with my Real Techniques Miracle Complexion sponge. I quit using a sponge because I just like the finish now a lot of using a brush on my other side of my face. I don't know what it is. I used to believe that I would never, ever not be a sponge ass bitch, but something changed. I don't know what happened. But now I love brushes so friggin' much. I can't believe this is me now. I still think this finish looks really nice though with a sponge. All right, and what I do now is I actually take my foundation and I do a couple of drops on my face. And I use my IT Cosmetics Love is the Foundation brush. I think a big draw for me to quit using a beauty blender or a beauty sponge to apply is that I used to feel like it was gonna make streaks in my foundation to use a brush. And I just don't find that to be the case now at all, especially if you sort of pat it on. This brush was such a game changer for me. I absolutely love the finish that it gives to foundation. And I love that I don't have to get up and go wet my beauty sponge. Because when you use a sponge like the Real Techniques or when you use a beauty blender, you have to get up, you have to get it wet, damp, you have to wring out all the water, you have to wash it a lot. I find that if I just use my brush, I can just get it done so much quicker. So I don't find a huge difference in the actual finish, but here's where the big difference has come in. So on the right side of my face, what I used to do is I would use the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer and I would draw a huge V on my under eyes to highlight. and I would dab it out with a beauty blender. I wanted really bright under eyes to really highlight that under eye look, but I just find that this specifically, almost the lighter I go with my concealer, the more texture you can see, the more cakey I look on my under eyes. I mean, initially it may not look that bad, but yeah, I don't know, man. I just started noticing it looking way too artificial for my personal preference. And this is what everyone on YouTube was doing. So I was like, well, that's what I gotta do. All right, so that's what I would do. And then I would immediately set it with a baking powder. So I would use my RCMA no color powder. I would put my little blender up in there. I would coat the tip and then bake my under eye. 
would also bake the side of my nose right here. I'd really get in there. My chin. I like to super matte face and then I liked to add the glow later. I would really cake on the powder. I would also set my full cheek area and up on my forehead so that my bronzer and everything like that would blend out. I would also kind of carve out my cheekbone as I saw a bunch of the bigger influencers doing like Jaclyn Hill always suggested to do this so I was like well then I'm gonna do that. All right and that is that side of the face. Now on the other side what I do now is I take a concealer. This is the ColourPop No Filter Concealer. I don't know the shade of this because it's it the sticker fell off the bottom but I think it's like medium 25 or something and I take a couple of dots of that underneath my eye and I take the same brush that I put my foundation on with and I just kind of buff it in. And that's what I do on this side. It's not super highlighted. I, I do not set it with powder at all. I just leave it as is. If it gets a little creasy, I take my brush and I just tap it out. But generally the creases will start to form in the next like five minutes. And then once I tap it out and it fully sets on its own, that's the that about that. Like it doesn't cause any issues from here on out. So that's what I would do for my base. Now I just leave this side completely unset, let it be completely natural on this side. This side I would fully let bake down for as long as possible and then Actually, in the meantime, I'm gonna do my brows while this is baking. So on the right side of my face, the way that I do my brows now, I use a pen called the MAC Shape and Shade Brow Tint Pen. This has a little fine tip on it and the product that comes out of it is very minimal in pigment. So as you can see, it's not overly pigmented, so it doesn't make my brows look super fake. So what I tend to do is I like to extend my brow down a bit on the tail just about like that. And then I like to just sort of gently fill it in. This is the shade taupe. I just find this to be such a fast way to do my eyebrows because before I used to really carve them out. I wanted them to look super, super intense and really ombre Instagram brow style. And now I like them to just look a little more natural. And I like to draw little hair strokes in the front here. And then I like to take my finger and especially on these hair stroke areas, just kind of like to sort of feather them out so that it's not too precise. It doesn't look too drawn on in the front there. And then I go in with Boy Brow from Glossier and I like to just define the hairs a little bit more. This is a brow gel that has like a brown tint to it. I like to just kind of define those hairs a little bit more. And that's the eyebrows that I do now. Super simple, super quick, not too overly done if you ask me. Now we're gonna get into 2015 brow. So I used to only use the Zoeva 317 wing liner brush for this. God help me if I can find it anywhere. So I'm just gonna use any sort of wing liner brush. This is actually the MAC 266 SHS brush. And this is very similar to the shape that I used to use. And the product I used to use is Dip Brow from ABH. As you can tell, I went through almost an entire container of this. Let's hope this isn't completely dried up. Now Nah, we're good, we're good. So what I used to do is I would fill in my brow, starting along the bottom, and I would take it out straight. I wouldn't bring my brow down at all, so there really wasn't much of an arch. I didn't want an arch in my brow. I thought the straighter, the better, and I thought it kind of made me look like a bitch. And for some reason, sometimes I like to look like a bitch, okay, I don't really know why. Not so much anymore, I wanna look friendly, but I didn't used to. Oh man, this is bringing back memories. Bringing back memories. In the front of my brow here, I would really taper it in so that it would be nice and gradient. Oh yeah, there she is, that's the brow. And I would bring it in pretty far. I thought always in my life that the closer my brow was to the center of my face, the better. And the more gradient it was, the better. And I might've been right, I might've been right. There she is, that's the brow. What a beaut. And then what I would do is I would take a flat brush and I would always use my Sigma E15, I believe it was. Let's see if I've got one in here. E15, where are you? Oh, you might be in here, huh? Nope. Ah, oh, found you my little Zoeva brush. This, this look familiar to any of you? There you 
you are. This is a Morphe one, that's fine. All right, this is not my Sigma E15, but this is the exact type of brush that I would use. This is the Morphe E43, and it's this little flat top brush. And what I would do is I would take my Tarte Shape Tape Concealer, put a bit on the back of my hand, dip into this here, and I would carve out my eyebrow. All right, that was typical of an eyebrow for me in 2015. All right, so now it is time to dust off my bake. And for that, I would use just whatever brush. I would use like a big fluffy brush generally. Something like this. This is like a Sigma tapered face. All right, and this is the base difference. So I'm gonna show you this side here. versus this side here. This is the palette that I used to use for contour. This right here is the Kat Von D shade and light palette. And as you can see, I used to use the shit out of the shade right here. I started finding that it was pulling pink on me, so I quit using it. And then now we quit using Kat Von D for more than one reason. Um, I'm gonna use this today, but this will probably be the last time you see me use this palette. I tend to gear more towards a lot more warm palettes. I love the BH Cosmetics Studio Pro Contour Palette, but if we're doing what I used to do, this is what I used to do. I would take my Smith Cosmetics 112 brush, I would dip into this quite a bit, and then I would contour. So I used to really lay the contour on pretty heavy because I wanted to look so skinny. That's kind of how I would do that side of my face. We're gonna be done with that palette now. And now what I like to do instead is I've been really actually into using the BH Cosmetics Studio Pro Contour Palette again. I don't contour with it because it's definitely a lot more warm toned as you can see. It's more of a bronzer palette. I've said it a thousand times and I will say it one more and the word that I will say has bronzer. Lately the brush that I've been using is actually this Pure Cosmetics and the Grinch brush and I just think that it applies contour really beautifully. And I like to sort of just mix it around in a lot of the bronzer shades, tap off the excess, and then just sort of tap it along the high points of my face. And you would think because you didn't set your face that it would get really patchy and stick in certain spots, but I just don't find that to be the case. That's about what I do to that side of my face for bronzer. I just feel like it looks a little more lifted. I feel like it looks a lot more warm and natural versus this looks just a little bit harsh to me. And by a little bit, I mean a lot. If this is how you do your makeup, fully understood. I loved it for a really long time. Now I just, I prefer a different look. For highlighter, I have always really loved Ofra highlighters. And as you guys know, if you followed me for a while, Everglow from Ofra was one of my all time favorites. And I would pretty much only use this shade right here. Here. I wanted to go super white with my highlight. I didn't care if it looked unnatural, I just wanted it. But I was putting it on top of powder, as you can see, it just doesn't stick as well. I used to love applying my highlights with a fan brush. I just, I don't know, I saw everyone else doing it and I thought that was the only way. So I used to really just dig deep into this white shade here. And that was about how I would highlight my face before. Brow bone, it's really heavy with a fan brush. All right, so a highlighter that I really fell in love with in 2018 was the ABH Omrizi highlighter. Lately I've been using my Ofra highlighters again, but this one is the one that I've most used in 2018. It's such a beautiful highlighter that I bought two more and I'm still not even close to hitting pan on this. So I like to take it on my BH Cosmetics number 140 brush. Just 
really focus it where I want it. I do highlight quite a bit still because I love that really intense wet glow. I find that on the powdered side, it just looks way more textured and less wet than when you don't set the base with any powder. I also like to take it up on my forehead a bit right here. I find that highlighting right here just looks really beautiful. I get down on my chin, which I always used to do. Still my cupid's bow, tip of my nose in here. And you know, I just find that it just adds such a beautiful glow. It looks so wet and dewy versus this side. I don't know, I just feel like it doesn't look as good. All right, so on this side of my face, I used to really like a matte liquid lipstick and I used to really overline my lips quite a bit, but I wouldn't use a lip liner. I would just use the matte liquid lipstick. I'm gonna use the shade Quick Step, which is the cream stain from Makeup Geek. I went through a moment where I just loved this so much. Oh, it's bringing back memories. I remember I used to bring my lower lip so far down that I would almost like cover up <laughs> this hole, which is so far from my lips. Yep, that's about right. That's about what I used to do. God, I haven't worn a matte liquid lipstick in so long. And now what I tend to do is just a gloss and then I use Mochalicious on the other side. This is the Bite French Press Lip Gloss in the shade Flat White. And then I take Wet n Wild Mochalicious and I run it along the center. Now I'm gonna finish off my eyes. And this part isn't that important because I'm really just running the same colors along the bottom of my eyes, but I would just take and kind of smoke out the bottom lash line. I've always done the same step, so not much has changed. Now I like to take my mascara and just do the top and bottom lashes. One big difference that I forgot about because it's been so long since I've done this, I used to do my mascara first on top and bottom and then I would apply my false lashes. And I forgot that I used to do that because it's been so long since I changed that technique, but I find now that if you apply false lashes first and then mascara second, it's just so much easier to apply them. And that's, that's all. And then the final step is that now I spray my face with the Catrice Prime and Fine Dewy Glow Setting Spray. And this side, I would use MAC Fix Plus. And this is the finished look. All right, you guys, and this is the finished look with the way I used to do my makeup versus how I do my makeup now. I'm gonna go over a few things that I think, and I wanna see what you guys agree with and what you disagree with in the comments below. So for me, the way I do my makeup now, far preferred. I just feel like it's a little bit more youthful. It tends to wear better on me throughout the day. It looks less dry, it blends better, and I just feel that overall, it looks more fresh and natural versus a lot more makeup-y and a little bit, in my opinion, overdone. You couldn't have told me a few years ago that I would like not set my face now, that I would not use any powder at all basically on this entire side of my face. I wouldn't have believed you because it was so ingrained in me that I needed to bake my face for longevity of wear and things like that. What I've discovered over the last year that I've really changed my makeup style is that you do not have to use any powder to make your makeup stay. For me, I do have dry to normal skin, and so I don't have any issue with my makeup staying or melting off. And in fact, one of the things that I prefer the most about this side of my face now is that I don't have the issue of inability to fix my makeup mistakes. On this side of my face, when I used to use a ton of powder, what I discovered was that if 
something were to get onto my face right here or an area of my under eye started to look cakey, I really could not fix that mistake once my face was powdered. I just found that I would struggle to layer any product on top because layering cream on top of powder doesn't generally work and I would start to have cakiness and issues with separating, especially on my nose area. What I discovered is that when you do not set your face like on this side, yes, things stay dewier, yes, things stay more movable. However, because they are movable, then you can move them later and you don't have any issues with makeup coming off or patchiness or powder issues. Because there is no setting powder on this side of my face, if for some reason something were to knock into me down here, I can take my brush and just re-tap over that. If for some reason my under eye starts creasing, I can take my brush and re-tap over it. On this side, if I were to do that, I run the risk of removing the powder. If I'm gonna take a cream product and tap back over this, it starts to pick up in certain areas. It starts to remove product and can start to really build up and cake up because there is just realistically so much more product on this side of my face with the amount of powder that I use to set it. Now, does this last longer? Possibly, but I do not find any issues with this not lasting long. As far as my lashes go, I like a spiky look, but now I like the softer look on this side. Maybe this is just as I'm changing as I get older. I just feel like this is a little more flattering on me, but you know, things change. In a year, I may look back at this and be like, what were you thinking? I don't love a contour anymore, whereas I used to really love to contour. Now I really only use bronzer shades. I just feel like it warms my face up more. It just is a little less harsh and I don't need a cut out contour anymore like I felt like I used to. I don't necessarily feel like it does make me look slimmer on this side. It just looks a little cakier. And as you can see, I do feel like on this side, because there's so much powder, I feel like any area where where there were sort of texture or bumps, I feel like it's sticking into that versus on this side, I feel like it's more smoothly blended even though there is no powder that it's blending on top of. I feel like this side looks more dewy and plump and youthful versus this side looking a little more powdery and makeup-y. My lips, while they look larger on this side, I always hated the drying effect that I would get from liquid lipstick. Realistically, I quit using liquid lipstick altogether. All I use now is a gloss and traditional creamy lipsticks. For me, again, they hydrate, they plump, and maybe my lips don't look as big on this side, but they also don't look as dry and overdone. For me, this is what I used to live for, and now I just prefer this side. I also feel like for my eyeshadow, I got better blendability, better pigmentation, and just overall, I prefer the look of this side versus this side. I feel like not setting my eyelid with powder is the way to go. I just don't have any issues with blending. I don't have any issues with patchiness. And I also really prefer the less highlighted under eye look. I know that back in the day, Kim Kardashian was a huge inspiration to so many people to really highlight the shit out of their under eyes with shape tape. For me, I just feel like this side looks so much more dry than this side. Overall, when I started doing my makeup like this, I started having less issues with foundation sitting weird on my nose, which is a huge issue for me. My nose used to be the number one area where foundation would not stick. When I stopped setting it and I started using a brush, foundation started sticking to my nose and I don't have issues with that anymore. When I started doing my makeup like this, I noticed that throughout the day, as my face warmed up, it almost started to look better versus this side. I feel like it starts to break down and look really cakey throughout the day. Oh, and for my brows, this side is a lot more angled to where I do look a little more intimidating on this side. Like I kind of look like a mean bitch and now on this side I'm like, What's up, friend? Any way that you do it though is your face, is your makeup preference. This is just how my makeup has evolved over time. And I'm sure, again, like I said, in a year or two, my makeup will look completely different, but this is currently what I'm loving and I really do think that it complements my face a lot more. I'd like to know what you guys think down in the comments. Which side do you prefer? Do you agree with what I'm saying here? Do you completely disagree? Do you do your makeup different than you used to? Do you find that as trends change or as you were maybe watching Instagram before versus now you're kind of trying things on your own, do you feel like you make different trends? choices in your makeup? Do you still set your face like you used to? Do you feel like anything that I said is completely opposite? All right, you guys, well, I hope you guys liked this video and that it was somewhat helpful for you. Maybe gave you some different tips on how to do your makeup versus how you're trying it now. And honestly, I think the cool thing about makeup is that you can test out new ways of doing things. Everyone has different skin. Everyone has different preferences when it comes to makeup. And this is just currently my preference. And I hope you guys like it. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I upload new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. You guys can also follow me on Instagram. Instagram and Twitter both are Raw Beauty Christy and I thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you at my next video. Bye. Stop 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 stop. I was thinking about
where now I don't set my face at all, either concealer. Now I don't set my face at all with either, I don't, I want to preface this with, I have hair all over my face. I was just kissing Maddie. But I have for a long time done that. So, keep going. So the right side of, is this like screaming because I left it on all night? The right side of my, you know what? I'm just gonna change the battery because I just have a bad feeling about this. Oh, where, where is my Zoeva brush? I'm orange again. Oh, you fucking camera, I swear to you. I hate you. Stop, honey. Oh, I'm orange, I'm orange. I'm the orangest I've ever been. What's happening? I used to really lay it on heavy because I wanted to not be orange. Why are you orange, you fucking asshole? Why are you so orange? L literally, why? Now what I like to do is I like to go in with my BH Cosmetics... Where is it? Why do I expressly only lose this one brush? Where are you? I literally used it yesterday. Where? Hello, where are you? On the ground? No. Where the fuck did I go? There. Where? Where's this brush? Are you kidding me? It was literally where I was looking for it the entire time. And lately I've actually been using my Ofra my, my Ofra I also like to, why is this so, say, oh my God, he wants up on my lap so bad. He's being such a little brat. You little purr bucket angel. Oh my God, I love you so much. I love you so much, Douglas. You are so sleepy and so snuggly right now. I'm telling you what, you need to stop it right now. Mm. Now you sleepy. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You are a jolly wool wool Oh my goodness. Oh. Yeah. You are your to do just want, I'm so sleepy, but I just want to dig it up right here. Look at this boy. Everybody loves you, Dallas. Oh my gosh, look at your little booty. Look at your wagon tail. Oh, you're like a little puppy doggy. Wagging your little. Oh my goodness.